Hello, Facebook friends. Timothy uh, asked me yesterday on my timeline if I believe in photons. And uh, I thought I would take this opportunity to explain ground potential basic principles in a little bit more detail. Now let's uh, go to our chalkboard here and uh, start a new screen. Now, ground potential theory differs a little bit from uh, the standard model theory, uh, and in not so many ways. Um, let's start off with the main point of difference. We're going to draw one axis, and this is going to be the potential energy axis, and I'm going to mark that with um, phi. Now, uh, the difference between, um, or, or the unique thing about ground potential theory is that uh, I have reason to believe that the potential energy axis is absolute. In other words, there is such a thing as a zero potential, and there is such a thing as an absolute maximum potential. And uh, I can explain later why that is uh, 938 million volts. Indeed, it's the uh, potential, the surface potential of a proton. And um, yeah, well, the main reason I believe that to be the maximum potential is that we we're not aware of any particle with a higher energy density than a proton. Now I shall draw another axis out from this one, which I shall call my T axis, and I shall indicate here that the observer is at this potential. And we shall call this line here for ground potential. So that this, where this intersects the uh, potential energy axis, we shall call it GP. So ground potential is along here. Now, if I change my chalk there. Now, uh, let's take a um, photon and draw that in on the time axis as a wave with a peak and a trough like that. So we can see here that this photon is symmetrical on the ground potential axis. The height of the of the wave here, which we normally refer to as uh, u, and the depth of the trough, which could be minus u, are equidistant on the ground potential axis. And this is the main feature of a particle with zero mass. A particle with zero mass has an equipotential wave either side of ground potential. And ground potential, that's where you are. You're the observer. And um, we've also discovered something else interesting from ground potential theory, because when you solve the ground potential equation, there is a very simple relationship between velocity and potential. And that relationship is very simple. It's delta V is equal to the speed of light multiplied by delta phi over phi. So we have a lowercase phi here and an uppercase phi here. The uppercase phi is the maximum potential. That's, a, that's the absolute total potential. And the delta phi is the difference between ground potential and whichever we part we're measuring. So when we apply this simple velocity equation to the photon, we find, to our surprise, or not so much to our surprise because we already knew this, that the peak and the trough propagate at different velocities. In fact, when you put the numbers in here, the difference in potential, which is this one for the positive wave and this one for the negative wave, we discovered to our surprise that the negative particle moves backwards in time and the positive particle moves forwards in time. 
So if we put some arrows in here, and I'll change the color of my chalk again, we'll find that this trough actually moves in this direction and the peak moves in this direction. So what is it telling us? It's telling us that a photon has angular momentum. All right? And because it has angular momentum, it's spinning on itself, it's net surface potential. So in other words, if you took any one particular point, let's say we took uh, this point here and measured that over time, you'll see that the, uh, the peak and the trough are passing each other, passing this point equally at equal distance and at equal amount of time. So you have a, a negative energy and positive energy rotating which indicates that this particle has a net surface potential of zero. So when you put the surface potential of this particle and put a zero in, in delta phi here, you'll find that this particle here essentially propagates with the speed of light. Now, if this was a particle with mass, it would just look slightly different. It's exactly the same thing, it's a wave, but when it has mass, it has one simple feature which is different to a photon. And let me show you. To do that I have to draw my axis again, so bear with me for a second. We'll just clear that, and this time I'll use my white chalk again, and we'll put in our potential energy axis here, here, and call that phi, and then we'll put our time axis in, and we'll draw our observer in over here, and let's um, grab the yellow chalk again, and this time we're going to draw in a massive particle. There it is. All right, so why is this particle massive? We can see here that the wave is asymmetrical on ground potential. Okay, remember this is ground potential, this is where you are. Now, this wave being asymmetrical along ground potential has a special feature. It has a surface potential. Unlike the photon, which has zero net potential on the surface, this particle has a surface potential because like the photon we find when we apply the ground potential velocity equation that these particles also move relative to the observer and what we find is that um, once again the negative particle moves backwards and the positive particle moves forwards. So in a dumbbell fashion we could we could draw this arrow all the way around. In this particular case you can see if an observer if you observe the uh, particle from here you'll see that the negative particle is much closer to the observer here than the positive particle. In other words this particle here has a negative surface potential. When it has a negative surface potential, we simply once again apply the ground potential velocity equation and we'll find that this particle is massive and it is either moving towards us or away from us depending on whether the potential is positive or negative. That's the, that's the simple explanation of ground potential. A particle with mass has a surface potential. It's a, it's a particle which its wave is asymmetric on the ground potential axis. A photon, or a massless particle, is a wave which is symmetrical on the ground potential axis. If we look at the, a simple wave like the hydrogen atom, we already know this. We already know the electron is rotating. And that's simply the, what governs the electron's rotation and the jiggling of the nucleus is simply 
the difference in potential between the proton and the electron with respect to the observer at ground potential. This is my argument for claiming that space itself does not partake in whether or not a particle does what it does. It is you, the observer, which determines what a particle does. It is your, the observer's potential which determines how the universe looks. The particle itself can take any shape depending on who's observing it. This is, this is the whole confusion with, um, with quantum uncertainty. There is nothing uncertain about the particle. The uncertainty lies with the observer. And the fact is that every observer is at a different potential because two observers cannot be in the same place at the same time. That's the Pauli exclusion principle determines that. So the universe is through your own eyes. I'm happy to take questions, and uh, sorry for my uh, rather ordinary drawings, but please consider the, uh, the photon and the massive particle as being the same thing observed from a different potential. Thanks, guys. Stephen.